This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Let's start with the latest from the NCDC on COVID-19. About 348 new cases of COVID-19 in the country were confirmed as at midnight, 3rd June 2020, by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. A breakdown of the figures shows that Lagos has 163 new cases, the FCT 76, Eboin 23, Rivers 21 and 8 each for Delta, Nasara and Niger states. Others are Enugu 6, 5 each for Bochi, Edo, Ekiti, Ondo, and Gombe states, while Benue has four, Ogun two, and one each for Oshun, Plateau, Kogi, and Anambra. Following this development, Nigeria now has a total of 11,166 cases of COVID-19, out of which 3,329 were discharged. Sadly, 315 patients have now been lost to the virus. One of the major challenges against curtailing the community transmission of COVID-19 in Nigeria is people's non-compliance with the laid down protocols. Many don't even believe in the existence of the viral disease. Against this background, Abdullahi Mustafa visited one of the isolation facilities in Kano and put together the situation report. Ikwana Dawaji Isolation Center here in Kano and the state has four of such facilities already activated in various parts of the metropolis. But this one has a 21 bed as a intensive care unit with fully equipped uh, facilities, life supporting facilities such as ventilators and oxygen concentrators. So we'll go inside and see how the patients or the clients are faring and how the health workers are manage managing this situation. This is the first time any non-frontline health worker is gaining access into the isolation wards of the facility. This rare opportunity, however, is not without some conditions. Wearing personal protective equipment is necessary, so we have to dress like the health workers. So this is what we are doing. We we'll go inside to see the patients as we are done with this uh, outfit change. Inside the wards are patients at various stages of recovery. Uh, well, we thank God so far uh, we have been able to demystify the COVID because we know that uh, when it came, it was believed to be something that if you have it, possibly you're going to die. But well, we thank God we have been admitting patients and very ill patients and we have been discussing them. Anybody that came here, he has a care. He will put comfort, brother, present, give him food, take care of him. Whether you have a nation or you don't have a nation. The eight-year-old patient has been on admission for more than three weeks. Uh, in my own case, I believe I, I attended a funeral. And um, I believe that is where I got it. I was very careful, but you know you can't be too careful in a gathering. <laughs> Having gone through this difficult condition, he advised Nigerians to keep themselves away from getting infected. And uh, make sure that um, you don't encourage gatherings. People should make sure that they always wear their face mask. Seeing they say is believing. And he who feels it knows it better. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The life of a TV journalist there. Many thanks, Abdullahi. And from Kano, we go to Benue State, where the Executive Council has keyed into the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. Phase 2 ease of lockdown by opening up churches and mosques, as well as markets. Governor Samuel Otum, who announced this at the Government House Makudi, said all protocols of the National Center for Disease Control against the spread of the pandemic must be complied with. Charles Arba reports. 
ease of some measures of the partial lockdown in Benue State is on the heels of the Presidential Task Force Phase 2 realization of the directives by opening churches and mosques Monday. Governor Samuel Otom, who announced that the state government is keen into the federal government resolution, disclosed that the state has eight cases of the virus at the moment. And in conformity, therefore, the following are pronounced. Churches and mosques, no service should last more than one hour. So the issue of social distances must be uh, observed. People congregating in mosques or churches must wear face masks. Markets will now be open subject to observance of all relevant protocols of National Center for Disease. The governor, who maintained that schools and interstate travels remain closed, relaxed the existing curfew from 8 p.m. to between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. Meanwhile, the state chairman, COVID-19 committee, and deputy governor, Benson Abono, says 16 young men who came into Benway Wednesday have been tracked three of which are Nigerians, nine from Bauchi, and four traders from Benue. He added that the committee has taken delivery of over 50 trucks of palliative items donated by individuals and corporate bodies for distribution to the less privileged in the state. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And the Kogi state governor, Yahayabelo, on Monday ordered a two-week lockdown on Kaba Bunu local government area in the state following the NCDC report on COVID-19 index case. With the lockdown in place, residents are appealing for palliatives to cushion the effect. Jonathan Omajali has more on the situation report. It will be worthy of note that on the 27th of May, the NCDC confirmed two cases of COVID-19 in Kogi state. The report which Kogi state government refuted, saying the process never went through laid down process of the NCDC. The action of the state government ordering the lockdown is to ensure the people in the area are strictly monitored and protected against the spread of the virus while trying to further verify the claim of the NCDC regarding the two identified COVID-19 cases from the area. Kogi state government, on its part, made proactive effort to reach the authorities of NCDC over the cases as identified by the organization, but proved abortive and has since then rejected the results. Notwithstanding the regrettable opaqueness enshrouded in the process of the NCDC declaring these two numbers for Kogi state, the Kogi state government persuaded that prevention is better than cure, made the choice to put aside her doubts and quickly kick in. Meanwhile, security operatives have been directed to enforce the 14 days total lockdown starting from midnight as the state prepares to send palliatives as efforts to cushion the effect of the order while preparing to follow issues surrounding the alleged emergence of COVID-19 to a logical conclusion. From the government house, Lokoja Francis Udojo, NTA News. Still on COVID-19, the Ekiti state government has called for cooperation and support of residents to stem the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Commissioner for Health, Dr. Mojishola Yaya Kolade, expressed concern as the state records five new cases. Kola Adebobui reports that a molecular laboratory has also been inaugurated to enhance the fight against COVID-19. The government has been battling with the stress and fund of taking the samples for COVID-19 tests to nearby Ede in Ocean State, Lagos and Federal Capital Territory, FCT, even with over 200 tests carried out so far in the state. This, like the state government says, necessitated the procurement of the molecular laboratory equipped with vital testing instruments and biosafety materials to support COVID-19 testing to save lives of Ekiti people from the pandemic. Some of the notable members of the state COVID-19 Response Resource Mobilization Committee, including its grand patron, Ria Febavala, commended the acquisition of the laboratory. As a government, we remain resolute in ensuring that the residents of the state are protected. The three patients that are currently infected they have comorbidities. When we say comorbidities, they have other medical conditions. Meanwhile, 
As a means to cushioning the effects of the COVID-19 lockdown, the National Youth Service Corps, NYC in the state, has extended hands of fellowship to some residents of various communities in the state with presentation of food items and face masks, as well as sanitizers to the people. We can assist by giving out a little of what we have. We share it with the public. You know, NYSC cares about the people. They were also synthesized on the precautionary measures against COVID-19 in Adwekiti, Kola, Adibabuji, Antinus. The National Orientation Agency has commenced motorized awareness campaign to check further spread of COVID-19 in Imo State. Kingsley Ononiu reports that the campaign is aimed at communicating government policies and activities towards eradicating coronavirus pandemic in the country. Virus is running on any surface. Once you touch that surface, make sure you use alcohol-based sanitizer to clean your hands. Want to read our state of COVID-19. We want every citizen of Nigeria to be responsible. We want every citizen of Nigeria to help to contain the spread of COVID-19. I'm advising people to, to take the fight against COVID-19 seriously. The truth is that it's real. Personally, the virus exists, but people in rural areas are careless about believing that it existed. So I want the urgency to go into rural area. And the COVID-19 rates it's on the increase, so also are the strategies employed to tame it. While government at all levels battle the pandemic, civil society, faith-based groups and institutions are providing the needed reinforcement in the front lines. The latest is the unveiling of a COVID-19 situation report and research centre in Abuja. Benny Adams has more from the Situation Room. With the gradual easing of lockdown across the country, there is a growing apprehension on the balance between health and wealth. While some are still of the view that the virus does not exist, a cross-section believes the virus has different mutations. If what we have in Nigeria is a different species of COVID-19, then there must be a different drug that could tackle it. This is a war room with members of concerned civil society and faith-based organizations, institutions, academics, and individuals as willing soldiers, providing reinforcement in the fight against COVID-19. Mwubuya John is leading in the trenches and confident that the Situation Room and Research Center will collect and collate data from all the 774 local government areas of the country with a view to identify research needs, expand opportunities for research collaboration in finding solution to COVID-19. Those of data will collect, what you have seen, so please, this will, 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 will empower us to tell the that this is what we have seen, this is what we have found out. There is also some fighting talk from elder statesman, Buba Galadima. But governors who stop testing of this COVID-19 is an act of criminality and calls for impeachable offense. You can't deny your citizens that. Increased testing and sensitive weighing of the imperatives for economic growth and the general well-being of citizens are some of the recommendations given by the group. Benny Adams, NTA News. This is Nationwide on the NTA. We take some messages now. More reports shortly. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones 
as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. This is a very important message. Operation, wear your mask, especially for people who are done old. No forget, your body no tranga like before. You know even tranga like your children or your grandchildren. So therefore, always wear your mask for this pandemic period. No need to receive visit also, even if not your grandchildren. Make extra mask where you go fit wash. Make like two and dash your neighbor one. And if they come out for house, wear your mask always. And if you come back, wash your hand with soap and running water. To avoid coronavirus, make you for live long for your children and your grandchildren. No forget, operation wear, wear your mask, especially for people who are done old. Protect me, I protect you. In a coalition of societies for the right of older persons in Nigeria, cost dropping, join body with National Orientation Agency (NOA). Bring on this message. There is a lot of fake news and report circulating especially on social media, on the coronavirus. Do not believe or partake in the spread of these fake reports. If it is not on the official website or news from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, disregard such report. Only together can we beat this virus. Only together can we overcome this pandemic. Follow the instructions and guidelines provided to combat this virus. Most importantly, Stay at home. Self-isolate, regardless of your status. The virus doesn't move unless we move. Let us work together to better Nigeria. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thanks for rejoining us, and we take you straight to our Lagos Network Center, where Dotun is on standby. Dotun, it's your turn. Thank you, Awa. The Nigerian Institute for Medical Research is working towards a vaccine and cure for COVID-19. Hinginu John Adams reports that the Institute is also developing a molecular test kit to further enhance trials across the world. No doubt COVID-19 has overwhelmed the world. Nigeria's Apex Medical Research Institute, one of the testing facilities in the country, is unrelenting in researches towards silencing the deadly COVID-19. The Director General, Professor Tunde Salako, says his team of researchers are working round the clock to achieve a possible vaccine. What we are doing currently um, is to look at uh, the recombinant methods of producing the vaccine. Since we have sequenced the virus, um, we have cap capabilities to determine the spike protein of the virus and then see if we can clone that. So we are in the process of trying to clone. Dr. Muina Fawara is a research fellow, Molecular Biology and Biotechnology Department, NIMA. She spends hours in the laboratory with just one aim, 
caution coronavirus. We also started working on formulating an RNA extraction kit and um, because of the COVID-19 we had to speed that up and I'm happy to say that about a month ago we tested that as well and it already works. We were able to, the institute was able to um, identify or detect COVID-19 using the RNA extraction kit for RNA extraction. There's a, a utility we are trying to make, something that will be useful to take out beyond all of this infrastructure, to take it to a side lab or a, a field somewhere and test people for COVID. As work continues at this facility, Nigerians will be looking up to Dr. Fawara and her team from Naima for a possible vaccine. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. The federal government is re-strategizing to increase its natural gas reserves, guarantee investment, as well as make the sector more attractive for indigenous and international participation. Imola Yotokede, who attended the virtual meeting where the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, declared the gains of the federal government in the sector, gathered that the nation's gas natural gas reserves surged by 3.16 trillion cubic feet in January 2020 against 2.10 cubic feet recorded in 2019. Now reports. Nigeria remains the largest oil and gas producer in Africa. Figures by the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, shows a decrease in crude oil and condensate reserves of 36.89 billion barrels as at 1st of January 2020 against 37 billion barrels in the previous year. The natural gas reserves, however, increased to 203.16 trillion cubic feet against 201 trillion cubic feet in 2019. The target for crude reserve actually is 40 billion barrels, while the gas reserve, we have two targets. One, by 2025, we want to see the gas reserve to grow to about 210 trillion cubic feet, while by 2030, we want our gas reserve to hit 220 trillion cubic feet. For improved productivity and accountability, more strategies are being implemented in the oil and gas sector. The routine surveillance report and online display that we do have help us to check per second, per second basis. And the production and export reporting that we generate from this data help us to track the volumes from wellhead to flow station to terminal for export. The newly launched 2020 marginal fuels bed round for 57 oil fields is also approved that Nigeria is ready for more business in the oil and gas industry. In Lagos, Imoli Ayotokidi, NTA News. To read Lagos State of Criminals and enhance its security architecture, most especially at the community level, Lagos State Governor Papajide Somolu has inaugurated the State Community Policing Advisory Committee and State Community Policing Committee at the Lagos State Government House, Ikeja. Nosa Usla reports that the State Advisory Committee on Community Policing is chaired by the Oba of Lagos, Oba Real One, Akiolu, with the Commissioner of Police, Akim Odumosu, as co-chair. Members of the committees comprise all heads of security agencies in the state, religious and community bodies, and representatives of various interest groups. Governor Babajide Songo-Olu stated that the inauguration of the committees was a testament to his administration's belief in community policing. He noted that community policing would take the stress of the police and give residents a sense of responsibility. Advising that every member must make it work, the governor charged each and every one of them to serve and fulfill their responsibility with transparency and diligence in making the state a no-go area for those bent on thwarting peace and security. One of the inadequacies of our current policing system has been the inability to tap the knowledge and intelligence that exists at neighborhood and at community levels. The Inspector General of Police who was represented by the head of training force headquarters, Davis Folawio, said community policing is a joint responsibility, hence the need to involve members of the society. 
in Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NCA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Awa in Abuja for the continuation of the news. Very well, Dotun. And back here in Abuja, the federal government is set to commence the implementation of the Mechanized Agriculture Revolution Program in the country, tagged the Green Imperative. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said it is part of the present administration's deliberate policy of ensuring that the sector is made viable. The minister said these at a media briefing in Abuja. Over now to Anthony Forsen. The Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohamed, explained that the Green Imperative Program is a Nigeria-Brazilian bilateral agriculture development program. The scheme is an outcome of Nigeria's decision to enroll in a government-to-government -government more food international program. The $1.2 billion program will be funded by the Brazilian Development Bank. The program will import completely knockdown parts of about 5,000 tractors and numerous farm implements. Similarly, 662 local governments have been programmed for the mechanized service scheme to be operated by the private sector. Laya Mohamed added that the scheme will create about 5 million jobs as well as create a sustainable supply chain of agricultural raw materials for large manufacturing companies. This will create 774 service centers nationwide to mechanize our farming methods and process or add value to farm produce locally, leading to efficiency and eliminating post-harvest losses, thereby cutting down cost of food all year round. On his part, the Minister for Agriculture, Sabo Nanunu, chronicled the gains derivable from the mechanized agri-revolution. This mechanization is going to affect 632 local governments across the country. And there will be accompanied to that 140 processing centers. These processing centers will be designed in such a way that clusters of local governments, maybe in five or in six or in seven, that are producing common products, will have a processing center for that common product to process for local consumption and to process for export. With all plans and negotiations completed, the scheme, the Agric Minister assured, will take off soon. In Abuja, Anthony Forsen, NTA News. And I understand the PTF daily briefing on COVID-19 is about to commence. We'll now hand you over to the proceedings there.